welcome everybody to Around Town with Rotary. This is a monthly program to kind of keep you up to date of all the great things that the Beverly Rotary Club does for our community. My name is Al Temkin. I'm going to serve today as your co-host, along with Mike Harrington. Mike, take it away. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our show here today. We're really excited. We have a terrific guest here today. I would like to welcome Leslie Gould. Leslie is the executive director of the Greater Beverly Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. I'm really honored that you thought about having me as one of your guests. Okay, well, terrific. Good to see you here today. Hey, Leslie, we have a number of things we'd like to talk with you about here today. But before we get into your career and your connection to the Beverly Rotary Club, uh, let's just talk a little bit about uh, family. Uh, you know, where do you live? And tell us a little bit about your family. So I'm originally from Swampscott, but I am currently living in Gloucester. I'm a single mom of two, everyone says it, amazing children, but my kids are really awesome. <laughs> no, my kids are awesome. Um, Jude and Lila. Jude is 11, about to be 12, and Lila is 10, about to be 11. So, and they're doing really well. So thank you. Well, great. Hey, where did you originally grow up, Leslie? Where are you from? So originally I am from Swampscott, as I mentioned. Um, awesome place to live. Great place to, great place to grow up because you're on the beach, obviously. And you can roller skate around town within the hour. Super. And tell us a little bit about, before you get into your career, about your education. Where did you go to school and what types of things were you thinking about as you were, you know, going through school in the early days? Well, obviously, I went to Swampscott High School and had a great time there. Loved being at that school. Um, it was a great high school experience for me personally. Um, then I went to Boston University, where the plan was for me to become a physical therapist. Oh, really? How'd that work out for you? Wow. So, um, <laughs> so when, when I kind of realized I couldn't quite keep up with the math, <laughs> and the science, because I actually, when I was a senior in high school, I actually doubled up. Junior and senior, I started doubling up on science and biology and 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 chemistry and all that fun stuff. Um, but I couldn't I couldn't handle the the regimen at at college. So um, my mother said, "Well, you know, you you like to write. Why don't you try journalism?" And I was like, "Okay," and I. I went to the College of Communications. So I was actually in the College of Basic Studies at Boston University, um, and that's a two-year program. And then what you do is you you decide your sophomore year where you're going to which college within the university you want to attend. So I went into the College of Communications, and that led me on my path to here. So let, let's kind of let, let's kind of take it from there, Leslie. So you went to the College of Communications. Give us a, an idea as to where that took you career-wise and what positions you actually held. So I was really lucky. Um, when I was, um, this is, you know, we talk about life and fate, right? We've talked about this before, um, especially with you, Al. I, I feel strongly. And actually, Mike, that's another story. Yeah, I mean, we've all met in, before I got to, to Beverly right. Right. Um, in one way, shape, or form. And I was lucky that a a friend of a friend, my se my senior year of college, said, uh, hey, Leslie, I was reading the Marblehead Reporter, and I saw that the local cable TV station is looking for, and of course, my phone's going off, and of course, it's Dr. Jamie. Um, they're looking for uh, a program, uh, a, a, a reporter at the local cable station. Um, you should apply. So I did. So I actually... Um, had an interview, but they decided to go with somebody else. And they said that they would keep my resume on file. Actually, I think that was the fall of my senior year. So it was 1989. And oh my God, in March of 1990, Joan Golliboy, who is still the program director there, called me and asked me to come in for an interview. And I, I, I seriously couldn't believe it. You have to understand something, regardless of where you go, where you went to school for communications, you could be at Syracuse, Northwestern, Emerson, BU, all the big, the great schools for communications. Nobody held your hand with this. You were on your own. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any recruiting like for engineers, business schools, you know, Ford, the Ford company, you know, the big eight back in the day for accounting. No, there were, there were no job fairs for you. You were on your own. So I landed there. <laughs> I landed the anchor position for a weekly newscast and a reporting position for that newscast. 
And at the time, I was one of the only students that actually had a job in some form of communications coming out of school, which was wow. so how like long, crazy. How long, how long did that last? I was at, in Mar it was for Marblehead, so it was good because it was right next door. <laughs> um, and it was for seven years. I was there for seven years. And I also became the program director of the Nahant channel. So I was, uh, for both Marblehead and Nahant, I was covering, I, I literally would do all the setup for selectmen's meetings. And back then it was a lot of heavy equipment, you know, right. wind, snow, rain, you name it. So uh, aside from my reporting and anchor duties, I was also the tech girl, you know, behind the camera. And I was in the middle of all the selectmen's meetings, town meetings, election night coverage, live so, election night coverage. Yeah. So how, so Leslie, how, how did that background lead you into the nonprofit world? Right. So um, just as I was thinking about leaving the cable station, because I felt like I had learned everything that I could, I got a phone call at the station from the director of the chamber of commerce in Marblehead at the time, who said that she was leaving. And I said, well, that's really too bad. Um, we had a nice relationship. I said, um, but that's a that's like a community story. So I'd like to come down and talk to you about that. When can I come down? She's like, no, 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 no. That's not why I'm calling. And I was like, okay. She goes, I'm calling because someone on my board have, has recommended you for the position. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, to me, it was apples and oranges. I'm like, it's not even like, it wasn't even in my wheelhouse like I wasn't this was it was like what so at the time I was um within about a year I was about to get married I was engaged to be married to my first husband so anyway because <laughs> you knew this was going to be a fun interview um and you know I wanted I was looking to go to another station I was going to go to I was going to try and see if I can get into New England cable news or you know it's like where do you go it's either you go to Rhode Island you go to Manchester, New Hampshire, like I'm in Marblehead. My life is kind of in Marblehead. So after some discussions, you know, I figured I'll apply for it. What the, hey, I knew the community. I did some research about Chambers, um, but I didn't know much about Chambers. I mean, you, re you did some research, but Chambers were still really in their infancy, especially around here. And I really only knew what a Chamber was through what I had reported on, you know, a picnic, a great picnic, a Christmas walk, a business after hours, not really the full extent of what it could be. So, but I obviously ended up getting the job. <laughs> and it was and you funny were there because for, one you were there person, for how long? I was there for nine years. And then? Yeah. What, and then I went to the Jewish Community Center for about nine months and kind of put my head on a pillow and it really wasn't a good match for me, for me personally. I was the director of development. And then I went to, um, and then one of, uh, an old classmate of mine walked into my office. This is how it goes. An old classmate of mine walked into my office who was also on the board of directors at the JCC and was also a member of the Lynn Area Chamber of Commerce and said, geez, did you hear that Kevin Donahue's leaving? And I was like, oh my God, he's leaving? So I got my resume and my book and everything. Uh, ready to go. And um, I got that job. And you were there for how many years were you there less? 10 years. Yeah. So you had so you had 17 years of executive director ch chamber leadership. Um, in 19 the background. Years. Huh? 19. I was nine years at I was nine years. I was seven years at the cable station, nine years in Marblehead and 10 years in Lynn. Okay, okay. And so, so what was it that attracted you to the Greater Beverly Chamber of Commerce? Duh, you. Well, besides me. <laughs> just kidding. No, no, no. Okay. So, so no, I'm just kidding, of course. No. So first of all, I had several friends uh, that had businesses here. Um, I had been following, I always follow all the chambers in the area. So I had a really good sense in my personal opinion of how I could take it to another level. The other thing, quite frankly, on a personal level, which I think people should weigh in um, when they're looking for a new job, is the fact that my my life is in Gloucester now and my children are here. And at the time, and I will say quite frankly, unfortunately, I was going through a custody situation and I had a sneaking suspicion in my gut that I was actually going to get my children full time. And I felt like the Greater Beverly Chamber of Commerce 
was a good fit for me as I saw my life transitioning. And I was just lucky enough to get it. Well, having, I mean, been, I was, the, having been the president uh, the year that you were hired, um, uh, it certainly has been an outstanding fit. And I want to make sure that anybody who watches this show knows what a tremendous job you are doing with that chamber. And I am not saying that because you're on this program. I'm saying that because it's an absolute <laughs> fact and the numbers would back that up. Thank you. Well, so thank Leslie, you yes, we're really, we're really lucky to have you. So you've been the executive director of several large local chambers now, just in general, you know, briefly, what are some of the things that really uh, are the keys to running a successful chamber? You've probably seen some chambers that have more success than others. In your, in your, based on your viewpoint, your perspective, you know, what are some of the, the key things that really um, drive a successful chamber? Well, I think most important, I think the director and the staff need to be very accessible to the membership. I think that's really important. There's nothing that turns a business owner off than an, a, a director, especially that doesn't want to talk to you, doesn't have the time for you, um, you know, uh, call my secretary, take a meeting, that kind of stuff that doesn't fly locally. Maybe it does in some local uh, larger chambers. But the reality is, is that, you know, people really appreciate that, that accessibility. The other thing is the programming has to be substantive. If it's not, you basically have a nice club and that's not what I'm in it for. Um, I think what I loved, and this is where everything kind of comes together. Um, the, all of what I found out very quickly in Marblehead is that all of my journalism skills were applicable to everything I did at the chamber, whether it was public speaking, writing, Every day I say I'm, I'm producing live television. Every event that we do is live TV. It's just in a different form. It's just not in the studio or through a camera lens, if you will. Um, so, I mean, it's just, you have to have good solid programming to say, to back up, this is what we do for our members. And we do it in a variety of ways. And the other thing is you have to be ever changing. You cannot stay with the same old, same old. You keep the things that are really good and that people love and are your foundation, but then you have to change with the times. You have to know what's current in, in the world and in your, in your country and in your home. And, and you have to change with those things. And you have to be willing to change. So that's really important for me. And Al knows this because I've said it so many times. It's not about necessarily how many members we have. It's who understands the mission and wants to be with us and go through this with us because we're all in it together. And I know it sounds very cliche, but I might run the chamber as the director, but the members are the stakeholders and they have far more power than they think. Well, Leslie, now that you've been connected to several chambers, I'm sure every chamber has their own kind of personality and, you know, unique characteristics. What are just a couple of things that may be unique about the, the, the Greater Beverly Group? I think that this chamber is such a hidden gem, and my, my goal is to continue to get it out there. One of the things I love about this chamber, oh my God, the people are amazing. And, and the people are, the, this is what I love. In this area, they don't have to come together for a cause. They just do. Like in Lynn, everybody was in for Lynn. It makes sense. Think about it. They have, you know, the reputation out there isn't great. So everybody in Lynn is in for Lynn. Lynn, Lynn, Lynn. And it's great. And you drink the Kool-Aid and it's great. But here, nobody has to be part of the chamber necessarily. Nobody has to volunteer their time for the chamber. And yet everybody is in it. And it's so cool. The other thing is that everyone is really happy here. <laughs> this is a happy place to live on the North Shore. I find people so congenial and so easy to talk to and so amenable and flexible and everybody throws their ideas out on the table and there's no agenda. There's no hidden agenda that I have come to con in contact with yet. And it's going, I'm going to go on my third year, June 1st. Go by uh, quickly. Talk about going by fast, right? Wow. So, so, I mean, this is just those features, those little characteristics mean a lot to a chamber, especially a local chamber. But what is it you think, Leslie, uh, from, a me from a member standpoint, what is it that you think members are looking for from their chamber of commerce? Always the number one is networking. 
everybody wants to meet somebody. And of course, you know, we are coming out of a pandemic, hopefully, right? But re- every single chamber, networking, 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 people want to meet people, people want to socialize, people want to get to know other businesses and how they can grow their business um, is really the number one thing, I think. And then they want to feel connected to something that means something to them, which is why, to some degree, I bring it up, you know, our Power of Women series that we do, that opened a door for other women to say, wow, this is something for me. And it's, we had plans before the pandemic hit to do more programming like that for industries, which I would like to get back to once we get our feet back on the ground. Well, that's After just this. perfect because you're leading me right into my next question. What, that's what, what I do. are some of the, what are, thank you for that. What are <laughs> some of the, uh, of the programs and the, and the um, uh, opportunities that the chamber is currently providing and or working on to satisfy that requirement? So we're still kind of in the middle of the pandemic. So we're still doing like a lot, some SBA uh, programming. Um, we're actually going to be talking with the undersecretary. Uh, we're, we're actually going to have a business scam, if you will, because there are a lot of business scams out there right now. So think about it, like COVID has created a lot of business scams just because, because people aren't watching, et cetera, et cetera. So we're actually going to be um, hosting um, an event with that in mind with the undersecretary of the Massachusetts um, Consumer Affairs, Business Affairs and Regulators. And you might say, well, that sounds really boring, but not if it happens to you, it won't be. So this is all about what's out there and what they're doing to watch it and regulate it. Um, That's important. We are going to be working with the city with Abu Toppin and Dominique Copeland. Um, As you may know, um, Abu is the new uh, diversity, equity and inclusion director for the city of Beverly. And he wants to work closely with our business community. So we are gonna be hosting on June 2nd, a round table discussion with all members. We're inviting everybody to join Dominique and Abu to talk about what are their needs? What are their struggles? What are their questions, concerns? What kind of programming can we also create for our businesses that will help them with any DEI, you know, issues or HR? Um, A lot of, there are a lot of sole proprietors that don't even know how to start. So there are a lot of, we've, and Abu and I have had some very frank conversations about this. And I think it's going to be an awesome series that we create. And I think it's going to be a real educational and inspirational opportunity for our business members to talk about something really unique and different that's happening nationally. Hey, thanks, Leslie. Hey, folks at home, we're just going to take a, a quick break here uh, Here at the midpoint of the show. Uh, we're going to invite you to watch about a one-minute video that just talks about some of the people of Rotary and some of our great activities. We'll be back shortly. Thank you. We raise a lot of money for Beverly organizations. And they bought us our refrigerated van. They made a significant contribution to the restoration of Ellis Square. They helped us house a family experiencing homelessness. They bought us our bookmobile. They were actually the first ones to donate instruments to the high school band. They bought oxygen masks for our rescue dogs. They helped buy our school bus. They fund the annual Bradgate ice cream social at Lynch Park every summer, and they even scoop the ice cream. Since 2014, they've supported the Cabot, funding preservation of this historic gem. They helped to fund the Council on Aging Van. They were a major donor to our new infant-toddler playground. They bought an emergency generator for Harbor Lighthouse. We funded and built the gazebo. And we've got a green thumb. A lot of green thumbs. A lot of green thumbs. Not to mention sculptures. We planted more than 100 trees last year. They donated a shuttle bus stop that brings veterans to the VA hospital in Bedford. We're going to buy a water drone to clean plastics out of Beverly Harbor. They make a big difference for United Way. We give up to eight scholarships. Eight scholarships every year since the mid-1980s. And I was a recipient, and thanks to their help, I was the first in my family to go to college. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Once again, our our guest here today is Leslie Gould, the executive director of the Greater Greater Beverly Chamber of Commerce. Hey, Leslie, we touched on COVID. You know, COVID has been such a remarkable time this past year or so. It's affected so many businesses and so many families. I'm sure it's affected, you know, your chamber and your team as well. But what are the biggest ways that that COVID has affected, you know, your day to day? And and what are some of the biggest, you know, um, takeaways and challenges coming out of COVID, do you think? I think that's a big question. So 
obviously the transition out of the office was challenging because Robin and I had to figure out, Robin is our assistant director, um, celebrating 13 years this year, this week, actually. Um, we had to figure out, okay, what's our purpose now? What are we doing? How are we handling this? Um, so we had to very quickly, you know, this wasn't a vacation. I, I think the first week we're kind of floundering and then all of a sudden we're like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. This is how we get our groove. And then it was just a balancing act between obviously, you know, the work-life balance of mom and work and, you know, my, my, my bedroom became an office, <laughs> um, which is where we are now. And we are slowly transitioning back into the office. So we, you'll see us there Mondays and Wednesdays for over the next couple of weeks. And then I'm slowly, we're going to get back to full time probably by June, the first week of June. Um, the challenges are deciding, quite frankly, what you want to take from this experience with you. And that's a personal, that's a personal um decision for people. Um, I can say that from the business point of view, I think we've all, even though we're really sick of Zoom, we've had some really productive meetings on Zoom. I don't think every meeting should be on Zoom, but I think it definitely opens the door where, you know, it's where people are commuting and they're rushing around during their day. Hey, I can go on, I can go on Zoom and now we can have a meeting, a board meeting, an e-board meeting, whatever. We can decide if we want to have it in person or not. And that's, that's a nice work-life balance that I think to some people they'll appreciate. I think there's a lot of regulation coming. I've, I've been asking the, um, you know, you never quite get the, the answer because I think at the time they really weren't sure, but I'm on every other week, I'm on a state call with Mike Keneally, who's the Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, and uh, with, all, with a lot of other chambers from around the state, et cetera. And I've always asked, you know, what do you think we're gonna take with us from COVID? regulations for restaurants. I mean, I think you're going to see a lot more masks staying in certain sectors and industries, for sure. I think the plexiglasses are staying up, you know, that kind of thing. And, and businesses will either like it or not like it. And, and we might be doing some events about that, depending on what those regulations are. Yeah, well, it certainly looks like it's going to be a whole different landscape coming out of COVID. In some cases, maybe there's been some lessons learned or maybe some permanent changes, ways to be more efficient. So, you know, hopefully it hasn't been all bad. I mean, it's been such a challenging time for a lot of businesses and I'm sure for the chamber too, but hopefully we've all learned some lessons along the way that maybe could make things more efficient in the future. Is that kind of the way you look at it too? Or? I do look at it. I also said to Robin at the very beginning, I said, if we do nothing, because there are some chambers that did nothing. If we do nothing, we just lost our jobs. Like as far as I was concerned, within a few weeks of starting to get going that last 2020 March, right? I, I literally remember saying to Robin, this is our job interview. So we better, we better damn bring it, <laughs> quite frankly, because if we don't, if we don't do anything, what do you say at the next job interview? So what did you do during COVID? How did you make a difference during COVID? Well, we just, you know what, we just went, we, we, we were sending out sometimes three emails a day, you know, I mean, just about the state and regular different, everything was changing so fast. And we just tried to do as many events as possible and stay on top of it, you know, and I do think that I do think lessons will be learned, but I think it'll take at least another six months to figure that out. I think you got to get back to normal to kind of actually figure out where you land. Because a lot yeah, of people well, are still getting over this. Yeah, and that's probably can be can be spoken of any industry at this point that's, in, in the world. Um, but I but I as as a member, past president, and still currently on the executive committee, I can say wholeheartedly the programming that, that you and Robin have brought to us as members has been phenomenal. Thank I've you. attended most of them, not all, but most of them, and they they're just terrific to you know be sitting at home with a beer in your hand at seven o'clock at night and listening to somebody talk about whatever the subject matter happens to be. So it's been great. And I, I am very much looking forward to, I think in early June, we have a face-to-face -face networking event that's coming up at the Rev. It's our um, very first in-person. And I can say, Al, to your point, and actually to sort of also answer your question back a few, Mike, um, you know, people want in-person networking. What didn't work for this chamber really was Zoom networking. It worked a little bit. Eh. Right. Right. But people want to right. be in person. So we actually haven't done any in person. We haven't done any Zoom networking events because it's like, eh, yeah. let's yeah. let's just go to it. Hey, Les, let me ask you this. So so I, I'm, I'm sure that when you knowing you as I do now, when you were coming into 
to become our executive director, you probably had a bunch of priorities that you wanted to kind of focus on. And now, as you said, we're three years in. Um, so looking back on what those priorities were and what's happened with them, what do you think? I think COVID was a major disruption to me. <laughs> um, I think we started to accomplish quite a bit. As a matter of fact, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, the beginning of 2020, I mean, it was going to be an incredibly, uh, an incredible growth year for this chamber. I could feel it. I could see it. My experience told me that we were going to really start riding a high and really kick this into high gear. So I got to get back. It's going to take a little time, but we've got to get back to that. Um, we've made some, we made quickly some operational changes in the office, different systems in the office. Um, I've done so I've gutted, um, you know, our business directory. I took a lot of time with that, um, which is our main collateral piece. It's our, it's our big piece. We're going to tackle, you know, we're in the middle right now of tackling a new logo. We, are, we have a logo contest happening. Um, and we also need a new website. That was something I was supposed to tackle last year, and that's coming down the pike. Um, so there are things, but we increased programming, and that was the other thing. When I got to this chamber, immediately I just started increasing programming because a busy chamber <laughs> is a respected and impactful chamber. A I chamber that just sits there is dead. Yeah, absolutely. There's no, quite, no way it can survive. Um, can you tell the, the viewing audience where the uh, the business awards program uh, where that stands and what the what what the future of that looks like? Sure, that's a great question. Um, we normally have our uh, business awards uh, in the, usually around the first week of February, and of course, we decided not to do anything virtually. What we are doing for this year for 2021. Um, we now that the state is opening up, we have actually booked Thursday, September 23rd. We are going to have what is going to be called GBCC Honors, Inspiring Stories and Heroes of 2020. This will take place of our typical business awards that you're used to. We have come up with nine different, I'll say, COVID-esque uh, categories. This is all positive. We will be honoring businesses as well as sole proprietors in every category um, and even um, first responders essential workers we've got it we've kind of got a good solid map laid out we want this to be a great celebration and almost like our opportunity to squeeze the squeeze the COVID out of us squeeze the pandemic out of us so that we can let it go in our memory and move forward but we definitely know that there are businesses that struggled there are businesses that have stories. There are people that deserve to be honored and recognized. And I mean, literally change the way that they do business. We want to hear these stories. And it seemed more appropriate this year to do something like that than just have your typical oh, business person of the year, business of the year, you know, that kind of thing. So we're going in a little different direction. And that's going to be you hoping a face to face. It's going to be face to face. It's going to be in person. I love it. Good. Yes, it's going to be face to face. We can have up to two hundred people in the in the ballroom at Danversport. So, awesome. yeah. Well, it'll be great to see people again. Hey, Leslie, we only have a couple minutes left here in our show, but hey, this is our Rotary show, and we, we do this regularly. And obviously, you're a Beverly Rotarian, and can you just give us a quick sense of how that happened? How were you exposed to Rotary, and uh, you know how long you've been involved in that? So obviously members of my board of directors in Marblehead were Rotarians, some were past presidents, et cetera. So, you know, it was suggested that I join Rotary and I'll be honest with you, I, I did join. Um, it was a very kind of typical perceived view of Rotary, the way a lot of people might perceive Rotary. I'm not even gonna say it because I think we all know it. Um, and to be honest with you, I sat there I went to the lunches and I sat there for about two years and I didn't do anything. And finally, one day I just thought to myself, what the hell am I doing here? What, what am I doing here? If I'm, if I'm going to come here, I'm going to do something. So I started thinking, well, what can I offer? So at the time, the Marblehead Rotary Club did a, a live auction on MHTV. 
to raise money and they raised a ton of money, but it was kind of a, the, the production of it was kind of lacking. It was a little boring. Um, it didn't have any interviews with people talking about Rotary and this and that. So I offered to be the executive producer <laughs> since that's the business that I came from. And, you know, we changed up the, the, the hosts and we changed up, um, you know, we, we brought in videos and stuff like that. So I did that. And then the other thing that I did that I'm actually really proud of with Rotary is um, the Marblehead Rotary has a lobster. They gave away like 50 pounds of lobster every year. And you were what I called shucking these $5 tickets, you know, to people. And you, for $5, you could win. So we always did this for about a week. And usually it was during the 4th of July um, Marblehead Festival of the Arts. So I'm sitting at the table and we had teams this year. Usually, originally it was individual and then it was teams. I decided that um, I'm not going to stay at the table. I'm going to stand outside of Crosby's. And I'm going to basically ask people to buy tickets. Well, I ended up selling 300 tickets in an hour. So and then I told everybody else, get yourself in front of Crosby's. No. And the next thing you know, we raised like $1,400, just our team. So then it was Leslie's Lobster Lovers. I love this. And then every year, every year, and then it got crazy. I got crazier because you know me. I started wearing cheerleading outfits. I mean, it was like I was wearing lobster <laughs> hats. I was like, anything I could do to get attention and like... <laughs> bring attention to rotary but i we always won and we always sold and that was like my my thing for rotary like that's that's how i i felt like i could be a part of it at the time so yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and coming here of course i was a member of the swamp scott rotary as well because that's my hometown and i decided to join swamp scott instead of Linz to give me a little bit of extra you know that was one of our our areas um when i was at the lynn area chamber of commerce and it was good to connect and then of course here um I, I was told that I need to join the Rotary Club right now. Yes, you were. As a matter of fact, you were. <laughs> yes. I might not be here if I said I wouldn't join. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Hey, hey, Leslie, um, uh, just as a final question, because we have to wrap up, but you, you're a single mom. You've got two great kids, and I know that for a fact. Um, you're, you're, you're building a wonderful career. You're a busy, busy lady. How do you make all that work? I'm a Gemini. I'm a lefty, and I have ADD. <laughs> Okay, that explains it. <laughs> that explains a lot. I don't really drink a lot, and no, I don't do drugs. I, I just, I, I am very blessed. My parents, my father especially, and my grandmother on my mother's side has a ton of energy. I mean, I'm talking like full. My my full energy is like right, and I just got it from both of them. I think you have to have a lot of energy in order to um, make it all happen and stay at a high level. Um, I do, people ask me all the time, do you ever sleep? Yes. Do you ever get depressed? Absolutely. I mean, I'm sad just like I'm a human being. I get sad just like everybody else. But I really, really believe if I didn't have the energy that I actually naturally possess, I mean, it, to me, it's my, my, one of my greatest assets because I can bring it. I just bring it. And there's positivity behind it as well. There's and you are contagious as well. Perseverance. What? You are contagious as well. Oh, you're a sweetheart. Well, thank hopefully in a good way. Hey, well, Leslie, thank you so much for being our guest here today. It's been a great half hour and we've covered a lot of ground, but hopefully it's given everybody a, at home a chance to know a little more about Leslie Gould. And hey, if anybody wants to learn more about the chamber or what's going on, what's the best way for them to, to reach out to folks that'll learn more? They can reach me at L Gould, G O U L D, at uh, greaterbeverlychamber.com. So it's L Gould at greaterbeverlychamber.com. Our offices are at the 100 Coming Center, Suite 107K. Reach me anytime. So. <laughs> So go Red Sox. I don't know where so I'm going to be the only guy. This interview, I'm going to be the only one here without any Red Sox gear on. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> Well, hey, everybody, thanks for joining us here today. This is our 100th year of Beverly Rotary. Uh, we're going to be having all kinds of great events and celebrations this year. So so we invite you to participate with us. But, hey, great to see you, Al Tempkin. Enjoy the game here today. Thank Leslie, you, always wonderful to see you. Talk to you soon, Thank everybody. you so much. Honestly, I'm really honored that you thought of me. Thank you so great much. Great job, Leslie. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here soon on Around Town with Rotary. Bye-bye now.